Welcome to Studying the Bible with Logos for Session 12. And I am thrilled to be your host tonight and trainer. As you can see, we have worked through quite a bit of material over the last year. And we are up at topic number 12, or down at the bottom, Searching Strategies for Sermons. Part 2 with Q&A. And just a reminder, feel free at any time during the presentation to bring your question in. Sometimes I'll prompt for questions, uh, but the easiest thing is just to ask those as you think of them, and then I'll integrate them into the presentation. Just a quick reminder, the webinars can be downloaded for $4.99. You'll see the uh, email tomorrow, usually around lunchtime, if everything goes right technically. If you don't see the email, then there'll be a little delay <laughs> to get things corrected. And uh, you can watch the webinar as often as you want. And then also, don't forget about the training CDs, 50% off special. We can do downloads, and you will get the update included with that as a download with that. So... Uh, the one, one question I always get often, what's the difference between webinar training and CD training? Webinar training is very topic-centered. Uh, it's a very loose and relaxed format. Uh, we don't always stop and, and tell you every place I'm clicking, though you will see that. It's very big picture, and uh, it assumes a little bit of a knowledge of Logos Bible software, a level of comfort, comfortability with that. The CDs, however, are the opposite. Uh, very structured, very self-paced, very self-guided, uh, uh, nice, easy, relaxed atmosphere, uh, but you will have everything spelled out for you in great detail. And uh, all the CDs with the updates combined is now 17 hours of training. Uh, one of the questions I get often is, how does this compare to Camp Logos? Pretty much everything that is covered in Camp Logos is covered in here and more. I'm really trying to create a great value uh, in training uh, to save you time and money. And uh, Morris, a great teacher. Uh, I've been to the seminars, and I highly recommend those if they come to your town. Nothing is like that live experience. Uh, but uh, the training CDs allow you to take the trainer home and use it at your convenience and one of the challenges I've had as a live trainer is so much information gets thrown at you kind of like what you're going to experience tonight and taking the training home is a great way to capture that event and watch it over and over so uh, uh, so take advantage of that and let's see uh, <laughs> Adam says I'll vouch for that since I have been to Camp Lagos and yours is much more in-depth thanks Adam and O'Neill has a question. Do you still have the buy one, get one free on the webinars? Uh, the, it's called the coupon BOGO, B-O-G-O. And uh, it's a coupon that can only be used once. Now, I'll have more specials in the future. But if you've already used the coupon, uh, you've used your turn up. And uh, we'll have another one as Christmas gets uh, approaches, and uh, we'll do some other creative uh, sales out there. But uh, for now, if you've used the BOGO coupon, you get to one, one use only with that coupon. Thanks, Onel. <laughs> so if you haven't used it, yeah, that's great. Then you can take advantage of that. All right, uh, we're getting close here to getting started. This is just preliminary information as uh, people are getting settled in. Uh, as you recall with the last webinar, we covered a lot of ground in part one of searching strategies. And uh, we talked about the importance of creating custom collections, prioritizations, leveraging a toolbar. We looked at the various guides, the homepage, passage, exegetical, and the Bible word study reports. And we did some ad hoc searching as well double-clicking on words like in English for English encyclopedias and dictionaries and we did some specialized searching with Greek and Hebrew so we're gonna build upon that foundation into part two and uh, and way we're gonna do this tonight is work through kind of a study methodology because this is about preparing sermons and when you prepare a sermon there is a methodology that you use and uh, in the best practices I outlined one that I've used for years that I learned in seminary modified a little bit that's uh, because of the technology and I think you'll really appreciate that so we're gonna look at the search engines and much more in depth really take advantage of the power of these we'll talk about the basic search the Bible search we'll do some morph searching and even some syntax searching 
Uh, then we'll talk about some important searches to master. Uh, if you've been keeping up on the Logos blog, as well as Morris's little tips for once a week, uh, he's been talking about some of these searches that I've been using for years. And uh, the training videos tonight and the webinars cover all that and more. Uh, we'll talk about uh, also some miscellaneous search tools that a lot of people don't notice but can come in handy. So let's get started with the training. And let's begin with the search engine. Now the, the basic search is really really should be titled book search because that's really what you're searching. You're searching your entire library or you're searching collections. And what I have here is a list of 10 steps in a typical Bible study methodology. Now, I've broken them down in a particular order. When I do sermon preparation, I sometimes blend certain steps. I may, uh, for example, each point kind of cycle through you know, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, and get that point down. And I'll go to second point and do it again. Word studies and cross checking, solving problems, application illustration. Uh, it just again are for pedagogical reasons, for teaching reasons. I'm trying to break it down into these are the key steps you all should be aware of and how to and how to do. And on the best practices training CD, we cover this extensively. Now, notice my point here. Know your books. On the best practices, we have over 130 book overviews on the training CDs. And some of those books you have in your library, and some of them you will not. And that's to expose you to other resources uh, that I think are important to have in your Logos library. When I was in seminary, the, the, one of the professors said, you need to have a library of 10,000 books. And I'm thinking, how in the world am I going to get you know, next semester's books paid for, let alone 10,000 books? Well, let me uh, allay any fears. You don't need 10,000 books. Uh, a good, if you have a, the right kind of books in your library, one to 2,000, maybe 3,000 is all that you need with Logos Bible software. And uh, that should encourage you because that's an attainable number for all of us. But the key is having the right books. One good book is worth about 10 mediocre books. And that is a 10 to 1 time saving as well because with one book you can go to the resource, get what you need, and get out instead of jumping from book to book to book to get the information. So what I'm going to show you in this section is how we can take every step in the sermon process, use some specialized searching to get the information we want. So the passage tonight we're going to look at, and there'll be several Old Testament as well as this one, New Testament, uh, to show you the full gamut of possibilities with the Logos search engine. So I'm going to switch to Logos, and let's jump in uh, feet first. So the first thing we want to do is open up the search engine. And we can access the search engine by clicking here on the search button. Uh, for Mac users, it's just a magnifying glass. And let's click on search. And then you'll see the search window open. Now when it opens, you'll have four options. Basic, Bible, Morph, and Syntax. And we're going to choose tonight the basic search. Now depending the last time you use this, you will see two search criteria. The all text and the entire library. If for some reason you've changed this, you'll see something else. But that's the typical default setting in Logos. Now what I have done earlier is I have created specialized collections for each step of my Bible, uh, my sermon preparation process. Let me show you those. So I'm going to click on entire library and I'm going to put in the word step because that's how I've labeled the collections. And you'll see here I have step 1, 2, all the way through 10. You'll also notice I put 0, 1 instead of 1, and that's so that it comes out in nice order there. You'll see that it's not step 1, step 10, then step 2 and 3. Uh, by putting 0, 1, 0, 2, I can get them all in order 1 through 10. Now, what I've done in these collections is I've put certain books in each of these steps. For example, in the prayer step, I've put in some prayer books. In step two, I've got my meditation and devotional books. Step three, I have my commentaries and historical background. Step four, I've got my theology books. And you can see there, journals and systematic theology. Step five, I've got some outline books. Uh, step six, I've got all my Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic dictionaries. 
Uh, step seven, I've got my Treasury of Scripture Knowledge and other cross-reference books, as well as other commentaries. Uh, step eight, same thing, solving problems with commentaries. Uh, step nine, I've got all my application books. And step ten, as is there, all my books of illustrations. So just for the first one, I'm going to choose step one. And we're going to do prayer. Now the particular search I want to use is a very specialized search. Now, if you are just typing a verse like James 3, 1 through 10, that's all you really have to do for Logos in the basic search engine. But I'm going to show you how to take this one step further to give you more flexibility. So as a general rule, if all you're looking to do is search for a verse, then you can just type in that verse straight. But if you're going to do anything else, anything more complicated, then you have to use the following format, which I'm going to type for you now. I'm going to use the less than sign, James 3, 1 through 10. I'm going to put a space in there. I'm going to use the approximate or tilde symbol, which is just below your escape key on your Mac or PC keyboard. And then I'm going to put in my Bible verse. In this case, uh, well, oh, I made a mistake. Let me back up. I <laughs> got ahead of myself. Bible and then tilde. Okay, I normally don't have that verse in there when I do this. And that's what threw me off. So the less than sign, Bible space, the approximate symbol, another space, then James 3, 1 through 10. That's my search range. Now, I use the approximate symbol whenever I'm searching more than one verse at a time. If you're just searching one verse, you can use the equal sign. But as soon as you move away into a verse range, I recommend using the approximate symbol. And then we'll close that out with a bracket or the greater than sign. Then we're going to use this important proximity keyword called within words. And I'm going to put the number 10. Over the years, I've experimented with this. And within 10 words is a very good number to start with. And uh, if you need to narrow your search, you would lower the number. And if you need to widen your search, that is to get more search results, then you would in uh, increase the number from 10 to, let's say, 20 or 30. And uh, Michael wants to know, can you tell us what books are in the groups? You know, let's do that in a second. I'll open up each one of these collections at the right so you can see those. Okay, great question, Michael. So back at the search formula, we've got our Bible verse, we've got our proximity within 10 words, and then we need our key words. Now, I'm going to put in the word pray with an asterisk or a wild card, which means find the word pray or any word that starts with the word pray. So praying, prayed. Now, Logos normally does that for you if you have that option turned on. Now, you may be asking, where's that option, John? I don't see it. Well, it's right here in the resource panel. We covered this in the first webinar, part one of searching, but I thought it'd be important to review. So I'm going to click here, and you'll see I have the option match all word forms checked. By having that checked, Logos will find pray, praying, and prayed. So this kind of prevent, this is a way of ensuring it's going to do it anyway. It's just kind of a habit I've gotten myself into. Okay, now, before we search, let's review again the three parts of this search formula. The first part is our verse, verse range. In this case, James 3, 1 through 10. Now what this means with this approximate symbol is that Logos is going to look for James 3, 1, or 3, 2, 3, 3, all the way through 10, or any combination. In fact, if, you're, if James 1 intersects any other James 3 passage in a book, it might be 3, 6, 3, 8, 3, 10, or it might be James chapter 2 through 4, which James 3 would be a part of, it will also find that as well. So this is a very wide type of search. It will have a lot of search results. It's not very narrow. Then again, the second part, just as a review, is the proximity within 10 words. And then that third part, I call the topic or key word. In this case, pray. So we're in the first step, which is prayer. And let's go ahead and open that collection now. So I'm going to go to Tools, and then I'm going to go to Collections. And I'm going to open up that first one. So I'll just put in the word Step and Pray. And let me expand the titles. And you can see some of these that I have in here. Uh, Books of Common Prayer. There's some lectionaries. Uh, we have the uh, Christian Doctrine of Prayer. Uh, we have uh, different other books, the Essentials of Prayer, Every Prayer in the Bible. We have the Exposition on Prayer, which is the ultimate 
book on prayer. You've got to get this thing. It's amazing. It's available in print as well as digital and Logos. 2,800 pages of every prayer of the Bible uh, explained and expositive. So you can see the books. Kenneth Boa, Handbook to Prayer. Most of you should have that. Uh, we have the Lord's Prayer by Arthur Pink. Uh, so you can see all these books on 